Yeah, one of my favorite philosophers that I've been reading lately and watching videos about lately is Wittgenstein. And he was a guy in the early 20th century, mostly. And he, he was a, about semantics. He talked about semantics all, you know. And he was, an interesting thing about him is that he had, like, changed his viewpoint, like, 180 degrees whenever he was right in the middle of, after he already was famous for his first viewpoint about semantics and his original viewpoint about semantics was something like mathematical or so forth in other words he would say something like we have to agree upon the definitions of words and in a exact fashion i hope i'm stating this correctly but um in other words, if I look at the, you know, if I'm looking at uh, something that's fast and you're looking at something that's fast, then you say it's fast and I say it's fast, then we have to agree upon what the meaning of fast is. You know, how fast is fast and how slow is slow. The other thing might be something like, you know, if I'm looking at the color red and you're looking at the color red, then we have to agree upon this is red. Now, now, two different people can look at the color red and see two different colors in their head, you know, in their mind. But when they see that color, it, it would constitute a certain wavelength upon the color spectrum. Then we would say that was what, what red is considered to be. And, and, you know, so in other words, he liked at first a very exact definition of things. And then he went away for a while and did his thing and then came back with a completely new idea which was the word games he, he believed that he changed his way of thinking to where he believed that people use words to manipulate each other in a kind of a game so instead you know if I'm saying like this is fast and you say that's fast then, then what I'm not I, you know we may agree that if you're driving in your car 150 miles an hour is fast but when somebody says that's fast they're saying more than you're driving 150 miles an hour they're saying something like you're going too fast in other words they there you you use the word fast in order to say more than just a, a logical uh, mathematical analysis but in order to manipulate the other person to possibly slow down you know so in other words when we talk we use words as a sort of a manipulation in a, in a sort of a game between social interactions and so forth and cultures so that being said my real purpose of this little chat is um when I, I want to know the difference between democracy, a democracy, and a republic, and uh, there, are, I, this is something that I've been getting lately, you know, on on, on the social networks and so forth, on, on the internet, people come up and they like to say that's we're not living in a democracy the united states is not a democracy they say the united states is a republic so i went and i looked up republic and democracy in the dictionary and uh, well democracy first of all it said there's two different ways of, of democracy there's direct democracy and then there's just general democracy and uh, what general democracy means is that people vote on issues or elect representatives to vote on making all the decisions within the society. And then it said in a republic is a representative form of elected government. So almost the same definitions, definition of democracy and republic and when i now why do people want to say this is a a republic you know 
instead of just saying, you know, either way, it's a democracy, it's a republic. And uh, they're using the old Wittgenstein's uh, expression of manipulation through words. And, 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 you know, Wittgenstein would say that all disagreements come down to definitions of words or, or something like that. And the, when, when everybody has a disagreement, first thing you got to do is find out how are we defining our words, you know? So, so where, where, where do we define democracy and republic? Because, I, I mean, a democracy, of course, is something that comes from the Greeks, I think. Um, and they had democracy back in Athens. And people would vote for the leader, and whoever got the majority would be the whoever whoever got the most votes anyway would be the leaders and and the, everybody had to serve time as a leader by the way now if you think about it the, rome was considered a republic so what, what is a republic i, I kind of honed it down to being that a republic is a country that has certain rules that form its uh, its uh, outline, you know, such as in the United States, we have the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution is the law, you know, the first framework and the law of the whole country and how we run the country. Now, when I was watching videos about people who say what the difference between a republic and a democracy was, they were saying that a republic has a minority protection. That, that's, you know, and, and I think they just threw that in there, to be honest with you. A republic, you know, because it wasn't the Soviet Union called the Soviet Socialistic Republic or something like that, the USSR, the Union of Leadership. If the boss said to do it, you had to do it whether, and if you were, you know, he could choose the minorities being out or in. So there really was no protection for anybody, you know, but it was a republic. Republic means that it, it was a, it was a, the framework was for the entire nation from the top down is what they meant. See, now, now, um, I always learned when I was in grade school anyway, uh, that the United States was a democratic republic. Okay? So, people who say, oh no, we don't live in a democracy, we live in a republic. I mean, they're, what are you talking about? We live in a democratic republic. Well, at least hopefully. I mean, I know there's a lot of cynics out there who think everybody that's in charge is actually secretly in a cabal manipulating the elections to their whims, but I'm not buying that, okay? I, I, I'm not buying that at all. Um, I think that we probably do live in a democratic republic and that being a, you know, I, what was that one famous quote uh, by Benjamin Franklin, you know? And they got done writing in the Constitution or whatever. Uh, well, it was it Benjamin Franklin? Uh, he, they asked him, well, what kind of government uh, is it? And he, he said, it's a republic if you can keep it. Well, what? all right, so what I'm going to use my words to manipulate what a republic and a democracy is, okay? I say a republic is... A system that has a framework to develop you know to hold in the nation and within that framework is a democracy people vote for the leadership people vote for issues directly vote for issues and the majority of the people decide what how we're going to go on these issues and who's going to be in charge the majority decides it's a democracy you know, there's protection for minorities because it's written into the Constitution. They have a Bill of Rights in the Constitution. They have protections of the minorities within the framework 
of that democracy, and that framework is the republic. So that's my way of explaining that. Um, let me, though, say that a lot of these people who are coming out and saying we live in a republic, not a democracy, which is wrong, by the way. We live in both a republic and a democracy. But those people are confusing the fact that they, are, they don't like Democrats and they do like democracy because they don't like the Democrats. I know that's a really silly way of doing it, but but it's just, as, let's go back to Wittgenstein. What they're talking about is manipulating the, the situation by saying that we're a republic by this way that they can like say, well, it was originally intended from the very start of the nation that we are a republic, therefore Republicans. See, it, it, it's an effort to define the word in order to manipulate the political situation. So anyway, th that's kind of where I'm at with this right now.